Hi guys, in this video I'm going to discuss why our elasticity of demand changes along our demand curves. In particular, I'm going to discuss this result. Our linear demand curves with any sort of incline are going to go from a point of perfect elasticity right up the top here to a point of perfect inelasticity down here with a point right in the middle here where we have what we call unit elasticity. These points, in a sense, define our regions of elasticity along the demand curve. In this top region here, the points on our demand curve will be all elastic, and at the bottom, our points are inelastic. Okay, so let's start by just noting the definition of our elasticity of demand as being the percentage change in quantity divided by the percentage change in price. And then since the elasticity here is all about percentage changes, I'm just going to consider a general property of percentages. And that is that the initial value, or for lack of a better word, the kind of level that we start at matters. So for instance, let's say I was earning $5,000 a year and I received a $5,000 raise. So my new wage, my new income becomes $10,000 per year. Well, if I work out my percentage change in income, it's going to be the change in the income divided by my initial income level. So 5,000, that's my change, divided by my initial level, which was 5,000, all multiplied by 100 is 100%. But if I change the level that I start at, so let's just say I was earning $100,000 and then I received a $5,000 raise, so my new income is 105,000, then the percentage change is going to be, well, the change is still going to be 5,000, but my initial value was 100,000, right? So all multiplied by 100 again, and I get a 5% increase. And so what you'll notice from this example is that when our variables are kind of at low levels relative to the change, so this initial example, for instance, when I started at $5,000, then my percentage change is going to come out as quite large. So in this case, 100%. Conversely, when the level of my variable was quite high relative to the change, so when I was earning $100,000, then my percentage change comes out as quite small, so in this case 5%. So as a general rule, if the starting level is kind of relatively high, we have small percentage changes. When the initial or starting point is kind of relatively low relative to the change, of course, we have kind of large percentage changes. And so let's apply this reasoning to our demand curve and our elasticity formula and see what happens. So for instance, right up here, if you're looking at changes in our price and quantity around this region of the demand curve, and maybe we're thinking of a point such as P prime and Q prime, well, P prime is a quite high price, right? If we think of all the possible prices, P prime is quite high. And Q prime is kind of quite low if we think about all of the possible quantities. And so just transferring the reasoning that we saw in my examples around incomes and looking at our elasticity of demand formula as our percentage change in quantity divided by the percentage change in price. Well, our percentage changes in quantity in this region are going to be quite large, just in virtue of the fact that our quantities are relatively quite, quite low. And our percentage changes in our prices in this region, on the other hand, are going to be quite small they're going to be smaller just in virtue of the fact that the prices here are quite high. So I'm just transferring the reasoning that we saw from my income example to kind of the levels, the, the starting points of my prices and quantities here. And actually the combination of large percentage changes in Q and small percentage changes in P are going to give us elasticity of demand values that are elastic in nature. So price moves a little bit and demand moves proportionately more than the change in price. So looking at our ratio, the elasticity in absolute value is going to be greater than one here because we're dividing a larger percentage change by a smaller percentage change. Alternatively, if we're not framing our elasticity in terms of absolute values, because our demand curve is downward sloping, our price and quantity will move in opposite directions. So the whole term will be negative and epsilon D will be less than negative one. And that's really our definition of elastic right there. And the whole point is that it's going to happen in this section of the demand curve, just in virtue of the fact that prices are quite high here and quantities are relatively quite low. So you guys can imagine at the other end here, we get the opposite result. So consider for instance, a position like P prime prime and Q prime prime. Well, Q prime prime is quite high and P prime prime is quite low. 
And so again, just applying the same logic, if we think about changes in this area of the demand curve, along with our formula for elasticity, well, in virtue of the quantities being relatively pretty high, then our percentage quantity changes in this region are going to be kind of quite small. Because our prices are relatively low, then our percentage price changes corresponding to movements in this area are going to be quite high. They're going to be larger. And this comes out to be exactly the conditions that we need for our points to be inelastic. Our quantity changes are proportionately less than our price changes. So our demand is not so responsive, or in other words, it's inelastic to changes in price. The absolute value of our elasticity in this section will be less than one, since our denominator is greater than our numerator. If we include the negative in this section, our elasticity will lie in between the boundaries of negative one and zero. And using this logic then we can see that actually the elasticity of our points on the demand curve as we increase Q is going to gradually decrease, becoming less elastic and then inelastic as we move down the curve due to the increase in quantity and the decrease in price. At the price axis intercept here, we're going to say that this point is perfectly elastic. And actually we say that the elasticity value is infinity here. Now, of course, if you try and work this out, we can't divide by zero. So assigning an elasticity to a point where Q is equal to zero might seem a bit strange. We simply can't get the percentage change in Q back for the numerator of our elasticity formula. The intuition of what economists are thinking about here when they designate this point as perfectly elastic is that we're going to think of this point as the limit as Q gets smaller and smaller and so as it approaches zero, so as it gets infin infinitesimally small. So if you're working out the elasticity at this point, the percentage change in Q comes out as infinite because we're dividing some positive number, that's the change in Q, by something that's kind of really, really, really small, infinitely small. If we work the whole elasticity out, the percentage change in P will be tiny again, and so the whole thing comes out as having an absolute value of infinity or negative infinity if we include the negative. As we increase the quantity that we produce, our elasticity is going to decrease in absolute value and become less elastic just in virtue of the fact that the, our quantity increases and our price decreases. Right in the middle here, so in our midpoint, the proportionate changes in our price and quantity are going to be exactly the same and so we get an elasticity of exactly negative one. Everything past this middle point as we increase quantity is going to be increasing in elasticity as our quantities get higher and our prices get lower. Finally, at the Q-axis intercept, we get to a perfectly inelastic point as we've reached the maximum quantity that we can sell. And so any price changes here are not going to lead to any further increases in demand. So demand is completely non-responsive to price changes at that point. Our elasticity is zero. Okay, I hope that helped. I hope that you understand the intuition as to why along our demand curve, we get every possible point of elasticity and inelasticity we can just because of the level of the price and quantity kind of combination. All right, uh, please like and subscribe if that did ho help. I hope it did. Please check out my other videos. I hope you guys are having fun studying economics.